So I'm in a, a musical called Rocky Horror and I get to play a character called, called Dr. Frankenfurter who is, he is a, a sweet transvestite. He's a man that dresses up as a woman and he is trying to create a perfect man that he can have sex with. That's the premise of the show. So it's a bit like creating Frankenstein's monster, but for him, he doesn't want a horrible monster. He wants a beautiful, sexy, gorgeous man with lots of muscles, a tan skin and blonde hair so he can have sex with. I watched the show many, 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 many years ago. Uh, I watched the film. Um, I never saw the musical before. I watched the film and I loved the film. I thought it was just such a great, great movie with the likes of Susan Sarandon in it and Tim Curry, even Meatloaf. Um, and it was such a wonderful film and to to watch it as a young boy and watch this character, Frankenfurter, was just like, oh my God, this is so outrageous and so unnormal to see a man dressed up in, in a woman's clothes. It was like, you know, wasn't heard of back then. And uh, my grandparents were very strict Catholic um, grandparents. So we weren't allowed to watch this kind of stuff in our house, it was banned. So to be told, no, you mustn't see it. It makes you want to watch it even more, you know? I think for me, you know, getting prepared to play Frank, I have to sit in my dressing room and first of all, start with my makeup. It takes me about half an hour to get the makeup on my face. Um, and then they come and fit the wig on my hair, which takes about another 20 minutes to get the wig on. And then they come and address me. There's not a lot of clothes, so that doesn't take very long. I've loved musical theatre since I was a little boy. Um, I remember going to London for the very first time. Um, I was probably about 15, I went with my mum and we went and watched uh, Miss Saigon, which was just incredible. Um, and then I went and saw Cats, and then I saw Starlight Express, um, and I just was completely mesmerised how you can go to theatre and watch a show that is so incredible, a huge production. Um, and just be caught, caught up in such a great, great show and, and the atmosphere. And I didn't see a, a musical in, in the West End London until I was older, till I, you know, till I was like 15. But for me, watching my first ever show, I was just like, oh my God, I, I wanna, this is what I wanna do. Yeah, the heels are gray. I'm used to the heels now. I mean, it took me a while to, to get my feet um, like, warmed up into the shoe because they were brand new shoes. So for the first couple of weeks, my feet were, I had loads of blisters, my feet were really painful, but now the shoes have like, my feet have molded to the shoe. So yeah, I can't believe I'm talking about heels, it's so weird. You know, I was in a boy band, supposedly straight, you know, now I'm strutting around on stage as a transvestite and come out as gays. It's really how strange how your life changes. Yeah, you know, I was really frightened to come out. I, it was something that I didn't feel comfortable about doing at first. Um, I didn't come out until I was 30. So I was much later on in life. Um, and I was just frightened, I think, to come out up until that point. Um, I had secret boyfriends. I didn't want people to know. Um, so I was, I kept it very, very private, very, very quiet. And I think the more I suppressed my sexuality, the more un unhappy I was inside. And it wasn't until I came out and all the pressure and all the, the sadness and unhappiness that I had, just it lifted. And, you know, I, I was really um, comfortable for the first time in my own skin, um, happy to be, to be free and to come out was such a, a wonderful thing. To be able to tell my mum who accepted me, who I was worried what she might think, you know, like we all do when we tell our parents how, how is you know a parents gonna accept their child being gay it's 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 hard sometimes but I was very lucky my mum was really understanding she was really accepting you know she was really loving and um, I, I couldn't have asked for better support you know and I know that that's not the case with lots of people out there lots of people have different coming out stories where their, their families haven't been as accepting and it's been really dramatic and really horrible um, and it's been frightening for, for the for the person they've had to run away or and I, I get it and you know and there's wonderful charity um, 
the Albert Kennedy Trust is a really great charity that I support um, to help people who have got problems coming out, who don't have the support from their family. So there's really great charities out there so people don't have to feel alone, they don't have to feel frightened, they don't have to feel isolated. They've got people to talk to, people to support, even if they're kicked out of their houses. The Albert Kennedy Trust is a, is a, is a charity that can help house people, support people, and, uh, and be a network um, to, to help people. I think if I could go back in time, I would just say to myself, don't worry so much. You know, nothing is ever as big as you imagine it. And in my head, the thought of being gay and coming out was such a huge, big deal. But actually the reality, it wasn't, you know. And I think I'd go back and just say, chill, it's okay. Live your life, be happy, don't worry so much. And don't worry what other people think. You have to live for you to be happy with who you are. Yeah, I was, you know, I went through a moment of thinking, am I ever going to have children? Um, what was going to happen to me? Um, you know, I, I always wanted a family, but I thought I'm not going to necessarily have a family because I knew that I was gay and I knew that um, I might not be able to, obviously I can't give birth and my the man I'm with wouldn't be able to, so I thought maybe I wouldn't be able to. But you know, I was very lucky. I had a daughter um, and I'm very blessed to have that. And actually a lot of my friends, gay couples now, they um, have had surrogacies, they've adopted. Um, so, you know, there, there is still ways to have children, even, even for being gay, which is amazing. And we've come on so far now. Yeah, I love Pride. I'm actually, I'm actually doing something quite exciting for Pride. It hasn't been announced yet, but um, I did a coll collaboration actually with the Albert Kennedy Trust um, and also um, a big company in the UK and that's going to be announced soon, which I'm really excited about. Um, we helped make a kind of documentary film about it, which is brilliant. Um, and yeah, I, I will be going to some prides, I'm sure. I'm going to head off to Mykonos at some point this year. I love going to Mykonos, it's great. Um, and yeah, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be having some fun at some prides. I'd love to have gone to World Pride this year in New York, but I'm not going to be able to because I'm working. But, say Let's do the time again